Hi, I'm Simon, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the inner game. The inner game is a concept that was created by Timothy Galway. It comes from the sport of tennis, and it's basically about how uh, you play a game against yourself and not against your opponent. So I'd like to ask a few questions and answer them as we go, okay? So the first question is, what is the inner game? Well, the inner game is a way of looking at life where when you make mistakes, you don't criticize yourself too much. You concentrate on your next move instead of looking back at what you did wrong and judging it. Of course, the judging is inevitable. So you're going to look at your mistake more as a neutral point instead of something negative. Okay. So the next question is, what is our performance driven by? And our performance is, is driven by our mind. And that part of our mind that tells us we're doing well, or that part of our mind that tells us that we're doing badly. And the next question is, how do we quiet our minds? Using the inner game, we quiet our minds by not judging ourselves and not judging the events. So we don't have that negative voice continuing in our mind. One of the most important questions here in the inner game is what should we say to ourselves when we do something wrong, we make a mistake? And here, the answer is, tell yourself that the mistake itself, or what looks to be a mistake, is not actually a mistake, but part of the learning process. And that is fully neutral. There's absolutely no negativity there. So if you're looking at that mistake and you're thinking, oh, this is terrible. Stop judging and look at the mistake again as a neutral point, as part of the process. The next question is, how do you separate self one from self two? Self one the self that judges you and self to the ju the part of you that just wants to do the next thing the part of you that wants to create the part of you that wants to succeed without concentrating too much on the finer details well basically you separate these two areas again by not judging by not judging something as either positive or negative and concentrating on the result that you want. Okay, the next question is, if we act the part, acting the part, as in, if you are a lawyer, you're going to act the part as a lawyer, even if you're a beginning, even if you're at the beginning of your career, you're going to be acting the part as if you've been there for many years. This is the idea. Uh, why should we be acting the part? Doesn't that come across as false? And this is not the point. You pick up the way that you mean to carry on, which means that you have to start and have the right mentality, have the kind of mentality that you've already been in the game, that you've already been doing it, that you're ready for the next step. And you can only do that by acting the part. In the beginning, if you show... If you, if you convey to other people that, oh, I'm at this stage, I'm making a lot of mistakes, oh, it's horrible, it's terrible, this is my experience, they're going to understand that you can't be trusted, that you're someone who is going through a process now of learning and, and that that could actually cause damage to their business or, or, or could mean something to them that, that's not positive. So by acting the part, you show them the confidence from inside yourself that you're ready to, to become who you want to become, that you're going to follow your goal into who you are. The next question is, why should we be excited about the goal? Why should we be excited about the goal or our desire? The reason why we need to be excited by the goal, in the, the way it was explained on one of the videos for In A Game, is the same way that a surfer looks at surfing. He looks at the wave and he gets excited by the feeling of the challenge. 
And here the point is, if you are going to create this excitement toward your goal and feel like that this goal is worthy of your skills and that this goal is challenging enough that it's, it's, it's going to make you feel good and you're creating this feeling of, of that this goal is worthwhile, that this is a good goal. You're getting this feeling and you're going with this feeling instead of this feeling of, oh, maybe it won't go right. Maybe there will be some problems. Maybe I will have a failure. Maybe I won't be able to achieve this challenge, which make it less fun and less exciting. So I guess the secret is here. When you look at a goal or a challenge as exciting, you're not looking at it from that perspective of maybe I'll fail. Maybe I won't make it. You're looking at it the perspective of I'm going to give this a go. This is a challenge. This is life. This is exciting. This is part of the process. So you're really thinking of it from this self to point of view. Okay. And then they ask, what is flow? So what is flow? Flow is measuring your challenge in terms of your skills and saying, I have the right skills for this challenge. The challenge is still difficult, but I'm going to enjoy the process of achieving this challenge. Now, of course, this is in balance with your skills. So when this challenge is too high for your skills, it's out of your skill range, then you're going to be feeling anxious, nervous, intense, and stressed. And you're probably going to make more mistakes. But when you're actually inside that zone and you're able to cope with the the challenge that you're undertaking then you're you're doing well you're on that line where where you're achieving and you, you can feel your progress and you, and you can feel that you're part of that process if the goal is too easy for you this is something else they say if the goal is too easy for you then you're going to get bored and you're going to get disinterested or um, you're going to lose enthusiasm toward the goal and it's just not going to be the same for you. Now, the last question that I wanted to ask today is uh, why, sh why shouldn't we fight bad habits? And the, the easy answer to this is um, a baby learning to talk, learning to walk, has the habit of falling down, has the habit of stuttering. But the baby does not have the cognitive sense to turn around and judge itself yet. And we learn that. In fact, here you could say the only bad habit that we should actually pay attention to is that judgment of ourselves. If we can maintain the attitude of that we are learning like a baby from a toddler to an adult. That we are going to fall down, that we are going to stutter as we speak then we have a guaranteed success there. We are allowing ourselves to make mistakes. We are allowing ourselves to fall down. So therefore, we're not afraid to make mistakes. And therefore, we have a much greater chance at continuing on to our goals without giving up and having more success in general. Thank you very much.